Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to NCCW Overdrive. My name is Dalton Crooks, and we have another action-packed show for you, filled with brawl matches, huge rivalries, everything else. But up first, a tag team match. Contest is scheduled for one fall. Making their way down the aisle at a total combined weight of 554 pounds, the EDE and Lucifer Ford, the Asylum! Ladies and gentlemen, the Asylum making their way to the ring. And our opponents currently in the ring at a total combined weight of 489 pounds, the T of Gavin Hawkins and Brandon Paul. The Asylum last week, we saw them attack James Frost after what we learned was a projection of Jackie, James Frost's uh, former ex, uh, former fiance. Um, she has a lot of story to it. Go to NGCW.TV to learn more. Or look at the article about the Asylum. Um, but the Asylum... Yeah, they tricked James, they attacked him, and now they're here for a tag team match. Their opponents, Brandon Paul and Gavin Hawkins, are some local talent. Good luck to those two guys. It's, uh, the Asylum are not, not an easy stepping stone, uh, and I don't see them advancing their career over these two monsters. And I don't mean that just in size, I mean that in their attitude and personality and everything that makes them who they are. These guys are monsters. Brandon Paul going to start in there with VEDE. VEDE -E. -E -E immediately locks him in and a big bulldog by the EDE. -E. We all saw the disgusting act by the Asylum, the EDE, and Lucifer Thorn. We saw it, like I said, the projection of Jackie walking down the ramp, uh, tricking, tricking me, tricking James, tricking everybody into thinking some, you know, what, what was, you know, what was this? Um, again, just to find out it was a projection, it wasn't real. Jackie is still not, she's still not here. Um, like I said, there's a long story, a long, gruesome story behind that. As I said, go to ngcw.tv to learn more. Um, it, it's disgusting. It, it's horrendous. It is unbecoming of an NGCW talent. It's disgraceful. But, you know, what, do you, what can you expect from the EDE and Lucifer Thorne? What can you expect from the Asylum? They're sick people. Brandon Paul and Gavin Hawkins think they might be able to do something, but right now we're seeing the complete opposite of that is the EDE taking it to Brandon Paul, but Brandon fighting out of it and now going to tag in his partner. Here comes Gavin Hawkins. I don't see Gavin faring any better than Brandon did. Big rushing leg sweep by the EDE. And they're set up in a big kick. These, these local wrestlers trying to make a name for themselves here in NGCW, a big Michinoku driver. I don't see uh, that coming <laughs> coming to pass for these two men, unfortunately. This is this is no way to start a debut against the Asylum. That is a that is a scary scary thought. Gavin Hawkins trying to fight back against EDE, but no, EDE just hip tossing him away from him. Big elbow across the chest of Gavin. And now just punching him and throwing his face into the mat. The ruthlessness of EDE. Gavin Hawkins quickly able to trip up. EDE locks him in and a big back suplex. 
I didn't even think they'd get that kind of move on the, on either of these guys from the Asylum, but they have, but EDE immediately right back at him. And that hip toss takes Gavin Hawkins down. And a snap suplex. The EDE hasn't even tagged in his partner yet. I don't even think he needs to. He's taunting the crowd. He knows this match is already in the bag. And now setting him up. A big punch. Takes him in. Drops him right down on his face and the pin. One, two, and that's it. Here are your winners, The Asylum. The Asylum picking up the win. The EDE getting the pin. It's the dance with the devil. That finishing maneuver. Took Gavin Hawkins out. Brandon Paul couldn't get the ring quick enough to break up the pinfall. And the Asylum have picked up an easy victory against the local power here tonight. What's next? these two monsters. the schedule for one fall. First, from Washington, D.C., weighing in at 203 pounds, Philip Pride. And here comes Philip Pride making his MGCW debut right here tonight. Philip Pride looking to, uh, looking to make a name for himself here on the roster right off the bat. First match here at MGCW. We'll see what he brings to the table in this one here tonight. There's a whole lot of people looking to join in GCW. Things are going hot and heavy. Things are moving. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the place to be, let me tell you. This man is no stranger to MGCW. This man is no stranger to technical masterpieces. Ladies and gentlemen, Cameron Cray, a force to be reckoned with, not someone you want to take lightly. He will lock in that bottom of the Thanes finisher. He will finish you in one move if you're not careful. got a much different attitude. You can see it in his face. He has a much different attitude than the last time we saw him. Cameron Craig. Let's see how Philip Pride does against Cameron Craig here tonight. I don't know much about Philip Pride. I don't know what he brings to the table. I know Cameron not someone to take lightly. We'll see if Philip Pride is going to take him lightly or if he's going to take him seriously. You can see right out of the gate, Cameron Cray with two punches in a Northern Lights suplex to kick this match off. He's starting hot and heavy, going right after Philip Pride. With a knee. Oh, and another knee! Jumping right into his face and a back suplex to boot. Big punch, already locks him in, bottom of the Thanes, but no, a rope break called by the referee. Philip Pride able to desperately get to the bottom rope. 
Cameron Cray, not done with him yet, slams him into the turnbuckle. The upper part of his back where the neck and the spine come together. And drops an elbow on the face of Philip Pride from across the ring. Lifts him up again, but Philip Pride able to fight out of it. And a big punch from Philip. Reversal by Cray though. Cray staying right on him, not allowing him to get the advantage. Reversal by Philip. And he drops him down. That backbreaker. Philip Pride may have just found the momentum he needed. But Cray right back to his feet. You don't want to taunt for too long. Now with the clotheslines. Cray went for a close on missed super kick by Philip Pride. Reversal by Cray and a punch to the face. Philip Pride going for a signature move, but it was reversed. Going to the top rope. Cray putting his legs behind the rope. Takes him in. Oh no. And drops him down. A cutter from the top rope. And Cameron Cray talking to the crowd. He knows this match is over. Waiting for him to get to his feet. Locks him once again. Bottom of the Thanes. But this time there's no rope break. It's over. Philip Cray taps out. Here is your winner, Cameron Cray. Cameron Cray returning to NGCW. And he has put away Philip Pride. Cameron Cray is your winner. Locking in the bottom of the thing, taps out Philip Pride. What a match for these two men. Okay, well, Cray's got some words to say. So, is that really the best you can offer me, management? That's really the most effort you're willing to put into. Cameron Cray. Well, isn't that just a big slap in the face? You see, two years ago, you abandoned me. You gave me an opportunity to compete, and then you shut your doors before it could even happen. So what did I have to do in those two years? I had to go work in cesspools, like Project Pro. Trying to make a name for myself because I knew one day NGCW would come back and they would realize the worth that they had back then. And hey, my prayers were answered, dreams were coming true because NGCW resurrection reared its head. And I was the first person to put my name down on that list of people who wanted to come back. And what did they do? They put me in a tag match with Fraza B as my tag partner. A man who spent two years after the doors were shut in his little home in Scotland doing nothing. And then, after we won that tag match, after I did all of the hard work and heavy lifting, they put us in a battle royal. All the new guys slumped together because, hey, we apparently couldn't hang with the vets now, could we? And who did management put their faith in in that match? Oh, they put their faith in Gabriel Cassidy. Oh yeah, don't think I didn't watch that match back. I heard all the comments your commentator was throwing out there. 
Gabriel Cassidy was the favourite. Gabriel Cassidy was the rising star in that battle royale. And after I got rid of him, oh, what an upset for Cameron Cray eliminating Gabriel Cassidy. Do you know how that made me feel? Made me feel abandoned like I was two years ago. Made me feel like you did not want your best developmental talent you have ever had. And hey, you then put your faith in Logan Hale, a man who, just like Fraser B, did the equivalent of nothing after resurrection and even before resurrection. So what did he do? He went and represented NGCW in the Twitch Cruiserweight Championship Tournament. Did he win it? No. Do you want to know why? Because he didn't pick someone who had worked their butt off to get to where they are to earn the right to represent NGCW and you picked him. Logan Hale is no better than the opponent that I had. Fraza B was no better than the opponent I just had. Gabriel Cassidy, no one's heard from him ever since I threw him out. He is no better than the opponent I just had. So I tell you what, Eric Pierce, or Dalton Crooks, or whoever on earth it is running the show back there, I will be taking the opportunities I deserve. And if you don't believe me, me and the people who have earned the right to be here through hard work while you were away, well, if we don't get the opportunities we deserve, we're going to shut the NGCW's doors for good. Well, I don't know what all that is about of whoever's running this show, but you know what, Cray, if you want to make it at NGCW, make it on your own. Don't try to call people like me and Eric out. Definitely an impressive talent, but I think he's got his, uh, his mindset in the wrong place there. This contest is scheduled for one fall. First, from Rosenheim, Germany, Tiffany Razor. Tiffany Razor making her NGCW debut here tonight. All the way from Germany. Ladies and gentlemen, hoping to make a big name for herself here tonight. So far, we've seen some fire from the women's division. Lexi Maleka, Ashley Kelly, Isabella White, all three great, great athletes. Tonight, Tiffany Razor looks to show that she's just as good as any of them are. So far, Isabella White has reigned supreme over the women's division here in NCW. She has not been defeated. 2-0. She has beat both Ashley Kelly and Lexi Maleka. Bella White is definitely the, the woman to beat. I'm sure Tiffany Razor got her eye on Isabella White. This lady. A lot of you are probably not psyched up, maybe a little psyched out. And her opponent. From Manila, Philippines, Sojo Lin. And here comes Sojo Lin. Both these ladies making their NGCW debuts here tonight. We'll see how they fare against each other. 
We got Tiffany Razor. She's out there. And you got Sojo Lin. I don't know much about either woman, just from what I can see, they, they both look ready to go. They both look ready to fight. Hopefully they put on uh, the same quality matches we've already seen from the likes of Lexi Malekka and Isabella White and Ashley Kelly. Women here in NGCW are hard hitting. They don't pull their punches. They are always ready for a fight. And here we go. The third episode of NGCW Overdrive and another women's contest here tonight. So Joe Lynn slamming Tiffany Razor down in a side headlock. Reversal. Out of it, and now they lock back up. Now Tiffany Razor going behind Sojo, but Sojo with the reversal takes her in. Now with the headlock of her own, wrenching it, and the knee to the back to follow it up. And a Northern Lights suplex by Tiffany Razor. There's the bridge pin, the ref in position one, and only a one count for Tiffany Razor. That was a beautiful bridge from that Northern Lights suplex. Now off the ropes, takes her in, slams her down to the mat, and a big kick to the chest. Tip oh, Tiffany Razor already taken the pad off of the turnbuckle, exposing the metal post, and a big knee to the gut. Sojo Lin able to stop Tiffany Razor, but Tiffany with a reversal. Going right back out for Sojo, but Sojo using her speed. Now pulling her over to the other turnbuckle, slamming her head into the pad. Multiple times trying to concuss Tiffany Razor. And a big springboard dive. Sojo Lin has control. No, wait, Tiffany Razor. Fighting right back out of it. Needs to do something here. And oh, a big double knee to the face. Taking Sojo Lin down. And a reversal. These two women going back and forth. Nice arm breaker by Sojo. Oh, and a beautiful flip into a Hurricane Rana. And a quick pin. One, two, no. Only a one count. I thought she'd get the two. Now calling on the support of the fans to fight back against Tiffany Razor, lifting her to her feet. And a big punch. And she drops her with the Black Moon Eclipse. Black Moon Eclipse two and only a two count. Tiffany Razor able to kick out of the finishing maneuver from Sojo Lin. Sojo going up top, calling for Tiffany to get to her feet. Tiffany is up, and a big missile drop kick. Lifts Razor up on her shoulders. Now what is she doing here? Oh, she's gonna drop her on the top rope. Hanging her over the top rope in one, two, but no. Tiffany once again kicking out. And she takes that kick to the back like it didn't even phase her. Kicks her in the gut, drops her down right on her head. The Razor DDT. Now just taunting at Sojo Lin sitting on the top rope. And a big elbow right to the face. And she's not done, gonna throw her to the outside. Wait a second, going out there with her. And a big kick to the gut, what is she doing? No, whoa, 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 oh my gosh! A power bomb on the apron. But Sojo Lin fighting right out of it, but oh, she's weak. 
You can see she's been weakened. Now, a weight reversal and an arm drag. Looked like Tiffany Razor was going, oh my gosh! Sojo was taunting after her reversal. Tiffany took advantage and hit a huge knee right in the face of Sojo Lin and then just beating her face in with those forearms. Going in the ring after her. Pulling her towards the center and she thinks that's gonna be enough. Will it be one, two, and no, Sojo Lin kicks out. Watch this again. She taunted and Tiffany took advantage of that huge knee to the face. Now Tiffany just once again taunting at Sojo Lin, telling her to get to her feet. Gonna pull her up, but Sojo fighting. Big uppercut, takes her in and another flip into a Hurricane Lana. And now, calling for it again. Locks her, Black Moon, Eclipse by Sojo. The pin and a rope break. Tiffany Razor grabbed the rope. And Tiffany gonna roll to the outside. What is she doing? She's grabbing a steel chair. And Tiffany Razor using the steel chair. Here is your winner as a result. On a disqualification, Sojo Lin. Tiffany Razor costs herself the match using a steel chair, getting herself disqualified. What's that all about? There's a way to make your, make your name for yourself, and that's not it. faced off against Shea Hoxton. Shea Hoxton was a better man in that one. He uh, <laughs> suckered Josh Omega in. He let Josh Omega get close to him, reversed a punch, got behind him, hit the 21, one, two, three. That was the end of the match. It was a great match. It was a great showing for Josh Omega, but it wasn't enough. He didn't get the win. He didn't get Brawl Series points. He looks to rectify that here tonight. See if he can get a victory over his next Brawl Series opponent. So ladies and gentlemen, keep in mind there is a whole lot at stake in the Brawl Series. The winner of the Brawl Series gets the NGCW Twitch TV Championship. That's a huge honor. That is. That is a, our showcase championship. The person that holds that is the face of the show every single week on Twitch.tv. This is an important championship to everyone in this tournament. Saying you won the Brawl Series is enough. But to add the Twitch championship to that, that's a big deal. And his opponent, from the shores of Jersey, weighing in at 234 pounds, Logan Hale. And here comes Logan Hale. Ladies and gentlemen, we know a lot about this man. And last week, he had a Brawl Series match against Liam Mercer. But as we saw, Steven Johnson came out and attacked Liam, threw him against the stairs. He caused some damage to Liam's shoulder, his head, and during the match, very quickly, we saw the submission impossible from Logan Hale, tapping out Liam Mercer for the first time in his career. 
Liam Mercer had to tap out. That cost him a whole lot of points, but it sparked another step in the rivalry of Steven Johnson and Liam Mercer, which by the way, we will see tonight. Liam Mercer and Steven Johnson will go one-on-one -on -one tonight in a Brawl Series match. That is our main event. You do not want to miss it. Right now we've got Logan Hale and Josh Omega. Logan taking Josh down and a big kick to the chest. And Logan going up top right off the bat. Dives off of the elbow, but Josh Omega rolls out of the way. Josh Omega had to learn from his match against Shea Hawks and learned that he had to bring more to the table. And I think he's doing just that already. Josh Omega with the elbows to the shoulder. And another elbow right to the face of Logan. Irish whip off the ropes, comes back, reversal by Logan for the fireman's carry. Lifting Josh to his feet, a punch. Logan in control, locks both arms and a big suplex. Logan trying to do some high risk moves, but Josh Omega able to fight. But no, Logan held right back on him, dropping him down. Logan pulling Josh away to the center and the pin. One, no, one, and one count. Logan Hale has a whole lot of points in the Brawl Series thanks to that match against Liam Mercer. How quickly he was able to put Mercer away helped him a lot. And there's a big kick taking Josh Omega down already. Logan setting up. Locks him in. There's one. There's two. And to finish it off, ladies and gentlemen, he calls this Hales Fortune. Drops him down. Bridge pin. One, two, and no, Josh Omega kicking out at two. Logan not done, but Josh with a reversal. And a spine buster. Taking Logan down. And Josh now, a kick to the face, lifting Logan back to his feet. Oh, he got, no wait, reversal. And he slams Logan down. Reverse the reversal. And a kick. And a big move there, and that launches Logan into the sky. The single knee face breaker, and there it is! One, two, and no! Hits that spear. But it wasn't enough to put away Logan Hale. Logan going right back after all. Oh, wait, going for the pin. One, no, only a one count. Logan yeah. Omega back to his feet. An Irish whip into the turnbuckle. Logan going to slowly walk over. And elbow to the face. Snapmare takes him down to the middle rope. And a big elbow to the back of the head. I went for the moonsault. Omega rolled out of the way. And now Omega, right after Logan, sends him into the turnbuckle this time. Reversal by Hale. And an elbow to the arm. Now Logan off the ropes. And a big scissors kick. Back out of it, Josh Omega pumping himself up. A big clothesline, a stiff clothesline. Ducks the clothesline, 
And another big clothesline, a leaping clothesline at that. And now, the face breaker. Logan back to his feet, Omega with a punch. And another big move. The Samoan elbow, one, two, and no, Logan Hale kicks out at two. Off the ropes, and another elbow, but reversed by Hale, who's up. And went for the back suplex reversal. Spinning in midair, Omega takes Hale down. And a big punch, turns him around. And a big back suplex of his own. And now the claw. And he slams him down by his head. Lifting him up by the temple. Slammed him down. The pinball. One, two, no. Not enough to put away Logan Hale. The arm breaker by Hale. Reversal, multiple reversals back and forth. Trips Omega down. And now locks him in a submission hold. He's got him. Omega's got to be careful. No, refuses to tap out. He was reaching for the ropes. He couldn't get to it, but Hale let him go. He saw the submission wasn't going anywhere. And reversal, elbow to the face by Omega. Which of these men's gonna pull out the victory? Oh, he was going for something there, but no, Logan Hale stopped him in his tracks. And now, Hale. Locks him. There's one. There's two, and finally, to finish it off, Hales, fortune, one, two, and now once again Omega kicks out. Omega refusing to die, refusing to stay down. Went for a chop, got caught, Northern Lights suplex, but no, doesn't go for the bridge pin. Big knee right to the side of the head. Oh, went for the man overboard. Went for the man overboard. Didn't get it. There's the Samoan elbow. The Samoan elbow. One, two, and Josh Omega. Here is your winner, Josh Omega. Josh Omega gets the victory! Winning his first Brawl Series match. Great showing for Josh Omega here tonight. Bishop and everyone thought he was going to try to pull the same tactic he did with Adam Ashes try to get Bishop counted out but it was not successful as uh, Bishop hit the Brick City Bomb one two three it was a quick victory Bishop was pleased Proudfoot can't be pleased
and his opponent from Old Ryan, Connecticut, weighing in at 250 pounds, Crazy Jay. And here comes Crazy Jay. Now, Crazy Jay has shown a lot here in MGCW. His very first week, he went against Tone White, and he was beaten with nine seconds left. Last week, he went against Adam Ashton, the face of NGCW. And they went to a time limit draw. Crazy J has gone the limit with two of the greatest wrestlers in the world today. And he lived to talk about it. Tonight, he has another one-on-one -on -one match. This time with another NGCW legend in Chris Proudfoot. Let's see how this goes here tonight. The bell rings. And Crazy J right off the bat. Big neck breaker on Proudfoot. Locking Proudfoot in. And now a big slam on Proudfoot. Crazy J. Chris Proudfoot, both men desperately want to win. Proudfoot wants to uh, prove himself after that humiliating loss to Duke Bishop last week. Crazy J just finally wants to get a victory in the Brawl Series. Like I said, a draw last week, a loss with nine seconds left, two, like, two shows ago. He wants a win. You can tell he's getting frustrated. And you can't blame the guy. Now an Irish whip off the ropes. Reversal by Crazy J. Fireman's carry on Proudfoot. Lifting him back to his feet. And a big kick to the gut. Off the ropes. Runs in and a running kick. Right to the side of the head. Crazy J now moving real fast. Both these men are very quick. And a big knee to the face. And a close line to follow it up. And now locks him in. Oh wait, the half sharpshooter. But no, Proudfoot fighting out of it. Reversal though by Crazy J. Reversal by Proudfoot who goes behind. Went to take out the leg, but it didn't work. Crazy J got out of the way. And a belly to belly slam. Taunting Proudfoot. Here's that big running knee with a clothesline combo. Is a belly to belly slam. Crazy J pulling him to his feet. And sends him into the turnbuckle. And another big knee with another big clothesline. And once again, he sets him up. And the Psycho Ward on Proudfoot. And the pin. One, two, and no, Proudfoot kicks out. Proudfoot. Proudfoot will not be denied. He's not done yet. Rake in the eyes, but no. Crazy J fighting out of it. Goes for a body slam. Gets reversed. Kick to the back of the leg. Just trying to weaken Crazy J. And the Northern knockout. Northern knockout by Proudfoot in the pin. One, two, no, a kick out. Could be in trouble. Proud foot calling on it. CP48! The CP48 connects! One, two, and Crazy J gets his shoulder off the mat. Proud foot hits the CP48. Springboard and a crossbody under the back. 
dragging Crazy J to the center. And a big knee to the back of the head. And now just taunting. Proudfoot thinks he's got this match firmly in his control. Pulls him to his feet, but Crazy J throws him away. And a big punch, and a slap, and a kick, and a, another big punch, and a clothesline. What a combo by Crazy J taking Proudfoot down to the mat. And now, big knee to the face. Off the ropes, and a big kick to follow it up. Crazy J is excited, you can see it, and now only one move left to hit. Locks him, Psycho Ward connects, and the pin for his first Brawl Series match, victory, three count. Here is your winner, Crazy J. To get his first points in the Brawl Series match, Crazy J has defeated Chris Proudfoot. Crazy J has finally done it. After a draw and a loss with nine seconds, he has finally overcome his opponent. And this can only mean a swing of good momentum for Crazy J. The Brawl Series continues. And Crazy J gets a little closer to getting to the end as the victor. This contest is scheduled for one fall and is a Brawl Series match. First, from Washington, D.C., weighing in at 252 pounds, Tone Waits. Ladies and gentlemen, here he comes. Some consider him the greatest wrestler in the world today. Ladies and gentlemen, a demigod of professional wrestling. Here he is, Tone White. Tone White. He is a wrestling machine. Absolutely one of the greats. And I'm always excited to see Tone. How can you not get pumped up when this man comes to the ring? The intimidation in his eyes, ladies and gentlemen. He's not just any ordinary wrestler. He's the king. Definitely favored to win this Brawl Series match in a lot of fans' eyes, but ladies and gentlemen, his opponent, the leader of the Brick City Movement. And his opponent from Newark, New Jersey, weighing in at 338 pounds, Duke Bishop. There's one thing we know about Duke Bishop. It's that he is just as great as Tone White could be. Duke Bishop. Last week, in easy fashion, with one Brick City bomb, put away Chris Proudfoot. And tonight, these two monsters clash, ladies and gentlemen. 
This is a battle for the ages. I don't know about you, but I am excited to see this one. And even for someone like Tone White, Duke Bishop is massive! Right out of the gate, both men going right after each other. Knees, elbows, and a big punch from Tone takes the big man down! Just to give you an idea of the strength behind those punches. They can take down a man like Duke Bishop. White with a belly to belly suplex. Both these men, as I said, two of the greats in NGCW. Two greats in the entire wrestling world. And they're squaring up right here in this Brawl Series match. The Bishop takes him in and drops him down. Almost like a Death Valley driver, but he rotated with him. Just to show the, the agility he has, even for a big man. Irish whip, and a big clothesline reversed, and a big, oh my gosh! Like I said, the agility of Duke Bishop. The man is 6'10", 338 pounds, and he can move like a cruiserweight. But Tone, gonna use his brawling, his powerhouse ability, even against a man like Duke Bishop. It's a lot to take over. And Tone, Irish whip, sends him out, but brings him right back into the ring. And a big spine buster! The spine buster by Tone! The spine buster by Tone! And that means one thing! That means Tone is ready! But whoa, wait a second! What happened? He hits a spine buster! We cut the replay! We come back! And there's huge German suplexes by Duke Bishop! Now he's just resting on the top rope. What did I miss? I looked at the replay for a second, and all of a sudden, Duke Bishop in firm control. My tone white fighting out of it. And another spine buster by Tone. He will not be denied. Setting up once again now. For the whiteout! And the whiteout connects the pin! One! Two! No! Only a one count! Duke Bishop kicks out! Colin going for a suplex, but he gets caught! And a suplex by Duke Bishop! Can you believe that Duke Bishop just kicked out of a whiteout at one? A one count, and he kicked out of the finishing maneuver of the demigod of professional wrestling, Tone White. Duke and Tone trading control back and forth, lifting Tone up, Tone with the reversal, and a DDT from Tone White. Neither man taking the other man lightly. Gonna send Bishop to the outside. Tone's gonna go out there with him. Ladies and gentlemen, they're brawling. They're going for it all. The elbows by Tone. And now, oh wait a second. Spins and a big sunset flip type power bomb. I love seeing that move from big men like Tone White. It just shows their agility. Tone dropping the elbow. 
Ladies and gentlemen, if this doesn't build your excitement for Brawl, I don't know what will. In GCW Brawl, it's a huge match with a, a huge match, a huge show. There's so much that will be happening there. Uh, oh, wait a second, hold up. Cone White signaling, lifts him up, and the White Out hooks the leg. One, no! A one count again! And Bishop now! Gonna pull Tone into these German suplexes! Two Germans! And a third German suplex! Oh, but you know that's not it. You know that's not it. He's signaling, waiting, and a big spear to Tone White! The pin, one, two, but no, Tone kicks out. And now, signaling for another one. Takes him in. This is what put Proudfoot away so quickly on the last show. Brick City Bomb! Will it be enough? One, two, no! Tone White kicks out. Back and forth these men are going. Duke Bishop now. Locking tone. And as I was saying before all that happened, the Brawl pay-per-view. We've got the Brawl match coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, a big battle royal. 30 men will be in the contest. What a, what a match. We don't know who's going to win. The winner will go on to face the NGCW champion at Onslaught. But also, you know, the winners of the two blocks of the Brawl series face off for the Twitch championship. That's a big match coming up at Brawl. We got a whole lot of exciting matches leading up to Brawl. More will be made official as we get on the way, but Tone White hits a spine buster. Probably the biggest match on that card, despite there being a brawl match, will definitely be Jason Spade and Alex Wolf in GCW Championship on the line. Both men in the previous encounters in NGCW, they both have three wins apiece over each other. Jason Spade has three singles match victories over Al Alex Wolf. Alex Wolf has two singles match victories and a, ma uh, a winning match in a triple threat match in which Adam Ashers was also involved. But Alex Wolf did pin Jason Spade, if my memory serves me correctly. So both men have three victories apiece. Brawl will be the tiebreaker. And now a pin by Tone. One, two, but no, Duke Bishop kicks out. It's almost like a best of seven series between Alex Wolf and Spade that has spanned many, many years. But now, back to Tone and Duke. Tone takes him in. Wide out. The wide out once again. The pin. One, two, but no. Bishop still kicks out. And there's a minute left in this match. There's a minute left. Both men need to pull out something here. Here comes the German suplexes from Duke Bishop. Two. And another German.
Lifts Tone up. Tone with the reversal and a nice reverse DDT. Lifting Bishop back to his feet. And a spine buster. 10 seconds left. Pulling him up. Five, four, three, two, one. And the match is over. Both men to their feet. Neither man wins this Brawl Series match. Time limit draw. This contest is scheduled for one fall. It is a Brawl Series match. First, from against the main, weighing in at 245 pounds, Leo Mercer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the match I've been waiting for all night. Liam Mercer goes one-on-one -on -one with arch rival Steven Johnson. Both men have been trading back and forth on Twitter. That was the beginning of their rivalry. That turned into Steven Johnson just watching Liam Mercer's match. Oh, wait a second. Mercer's got something to say. Well, well, well. Steven Big Johnson. Here we are again at NGCW Overdrive. Tonight is the biggest match of your career. See, everything you stand for, everything that makes you, you, is on the line tonight. Do you know why? Because your whole thing is size matters. And tonight, I'm going to prove to every fan here, every star in the back, every member of management, that you're just overcompensating. Tonight, I am going to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt why I am the very best in this Brawl series. I don't care if you're Logan Hale. I don't care if you're Josh Omega. I don't care who you are. This series, this tournament is mine. See, Mr. Johnson decided he was going to take a visit to my hometown of Augusta, Maine this week. And he made, he made some comments about where I'm from. He made some comments about what he likes and didn't like. Johnson, it doesn't matter what you have to say. It doesn't matter what you do because everyone knows the people in this front row, the people way up in the back row, and everywhere in between come to watch me fight. They come to watch me put on a show and entertain each and every one of them. Do you know why? Because in the two years that you've been here, you've done nothing. The two years that I've been in the business, I've done everything. I am the very best in this business. They call me the shooter for a reason because it's not just what I do in the ring, it's what I say and do on the microphone. So when this match is about to be over and you're on your knees begging for mercy, I will give you mercy in the form of a mercy kill to your face. Now get your ass down here so I can make you look like a bitch to the rest of this crowd. Oh my. 
the tension is indescribable right now. And his opponent from Boston, Massachusetts, weighing in at 290 pounds, Steven Johnson. The tension in this arena. Last time on NGCW Overdrive, Steven Johnson cost Liam Mercer a Brawl Series match and a whole lot of points. Mercer didn't forget. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, this match is going to break down. These men want to tear each other apart. Johnson not even giving Mercer the respect to look at him as he enters the ring. Pretending like Mercer isn't even there. Johnson definitely thinks he's the greatest and that no one can overcome him. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Liam Mercer. Well, Liam Mercer is one of the best of all time. Let's see how this breaks down. The bell rings. Johnson right out of the gate. DDT on Mercer. But Mercer with a reversal. Ladies and gentlemen, all the buildup, all the tension is finally boiling over right here in this match. Here tonight, Brawl Series points on the line. Headbutts from Mercer. The ruthlessness from both these men will be insurmountable. And Johnson taunting Mercer, saying size matters in the ring. A big punch by Mercer sends Johnson down. Liam Mercer, 6'3", 245 pounds. Steven Johnson, 6'8", 290 pounds. Johnson definitely the bigger man, but Liam, Liam says it's going to take a lot more than that to put him away a big punch by Johnson. Oh! Through Mercer, but the ref took a bump. And now Mercer reversing Johnson, elbowed him, and then that big throwing power bomb. Pulling Johnson to his feet, off the ropes, and oh, driving him face first into the mat. Just showing how ruthless he can be with Steven Johnson. These men are not afraid to hurt each other. They want to cause all the physical harm they can. They've tried to wear each other down mentally. They're wearing each other down physically here in this match. They're using every aspect of their body, every aspect of their mind, every aspect of their soul to get the one up on each other. Mercer pulls him in and drops him face first on his knee. No, only a one count. There he is again. Throwing him around, dropping him face first on the knee, but it wasn't enough. Maybe this will be. Pulls him up. Mercy kill! The mercy kill connects. Will one be enough to put away Johnson? What an embarrassment it would be if it were. No, only a two count. Here it is again, the mercy kill. 
He said he would hit it, and he did. He said it would be enough, but it wasn't. Now sending Johnson to the outside. Oh, boy. Here we go. Both men to the outside of the ring now. And the referee... Oh, you can tell the referee's concerned. He knows the rivalry that's been building between these two men. He's going outside to... I don't know. There's nothing he can do about it. You try to get in between these two men and tell them to get back in the ring. That's a big knee to the side of the head. Once again, those knees, those kicks, those elbows. These men fighting back and forth, sent into the crowd barrier. Johnson now just beating Mercer. And there's the bell. This match is over, and these men don't even care. Now Johnson going out to the crowd. And Liam's going to follow him. We are in the crowd, ladies and gentlemen. Dragging him away, but Johnson fighting out of it. And a headbutt to the back of the head and another one. And another one just driving Mercer back into this back area. Throwing him into that barricade back there and to throw his head off of it. These men being ruthless with one another. Slammed him down with a full Nelson slam on the concrete. But Liam, stronger than that. Fighting out of it. But Johnson, oh, a back, back body drop onto that steel chair. Ladies and gentlemen, this match has broken down. This is no longer a match. This is just a fight. These men don't care about Brawl Series points with each other. They don't care. They just want to beat each other into submission. They want to be the last man standing. Johnson takes him in. The package. Pile driver dropped him right on his head. Johnson with a kick to the gut. Like I said, they don't care about pinfalls. They just want to beat each other down. They want to be the last man standing with one another. And they're fighting back and forth. He pulls Johnson up. Sends him down. Mercy kill on Johnson. What a fight. What a brawl between these two men. And now, just pulling back, just trying to wear out Johnson. Just trying to inflict more damage, but Johnson's out of it. And a big kick by Johnson. Reversal by Mercer. Reversal by Johnson and a big clothesline. Johnson now pulling Mercer farther into the crowd, it looks like, but Mercer with these elbows. A big punch sending Johnson back. And a big punch from Johnson. And now Mercer pulling Johnson. <laughs> Showing that crowd member right there. Putting Johnson right in his face so the crowd member could yell at him. But Johnson able to fight out of it. Now they're just trading blows. The knee from Johnson. Reversal and an uppercut from Mercer. Reversal and an uppercut from Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, we're out of time here. We've got to go. This match is a draw.